Okay, Greg, here is a question Maybe. from Jason from Massachusetts. Regarding the New Testament canon, my understanding is apostolic authority was an important aspect in determining whether a book was, con- was to be considered scripture. This makes sense, but I am wrestling with understanding how Hebrews would be included if the authorship is slash was in question. Well, that's that's a good question. It's a fair one. And the whole process of a canon canonization was um it's the right word to put this. Okay, it, it wasn't the result of a bunch of Christians getting together in a council who had on their own authority identified which books were in the Bible. This is kind of the Roman Catholic view. We wrote the Bible, so we get to decide who was in the Bible, which books were in the Bible, and we get to decide what the Bible means. There was no Roman Catholic Church during that time. Um, there was just a lot of churches, all no, not as we understand it. So uh, eventually there was a bishop in Rome, but uh, and there were bishops all over the area. By the beginning of the fourth century, um, all of those Christian population areas had a representative that went to the Council of Nicaea in Rome, sent to just like everyone else. Okay, uh, what? So you didn't have this group of people who said this is the text. What you had is a, for lack of a better word, a progressive understanding of what. Uh, was the text given by God, very similar to what you had with the Jews. The Jews had a text. They were a body of people that were God's people that recognized the authoritative text as a body. And, of course, uh, some of these were prophets directly, other words, collections of information like uh, the historical materials, some, of course, Moses, the first five books. Um, and so what you have then in the New Testament is that the church goes on, they, the church understood, first of all, that the apostles spoke with authority. They were trained by Jesus, and so they spoke with authority. And if a thing had, a book had a, a clear apostolic um authority to it. Either an apostle wrote it, like um, John did, or Paul, or it was written in close association with an apostle, like Mark's gospel was with Peter. And we have one citation that indicates that was the case, but the important thing is the early church understood that. We're further removed from these circumstances. We don't have as much documentation, but there was an apostolic authority associated with it, and the church just simply knew and acknowledged, well, this is Scripture. And even, um, is it John's writings? Yeah, uh, no, Peter's writings, talking about Paul's writings being hard to understand like, and get distorted like they do, like other people do, the rest of the Scripture. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so he said there was this identification of that. <coughs> Pardon me, you have a few exceptions to that general rule, and one of them is Hebrews because there wasn't a a clear authorship there. It's clear it's not Paul, uh, because of the wording in the Hebrews, it makes it uh, uh, understood. It's clear that it's not Pauline. Nevertheless, this was one of the books that the early church had almost a a fairly unified sense, for lack of a better word, that this was authoritative, that this was from God, okay? Now, there are other books like the DDK or the Shepherd of Hermas or or, uh, that, that had value for the Christians of that time to be read for their spiritual nourishment, but they didn't have the authority of Scripture like the rest did. And there was some discussion back and forth, and so there was some debate. But but little by little, they, the church settled in on a group of Scriptures. And this can be identified by the writings of the early church fathers, the kinds of the books they quote from as authoritative and from God, whether it's Irenaeus or um, that's quoting, or Tertullian that's quoting, or... Um, um, I'm trying to think of the Irenaeus' disciple, or disciple of John. Um, Polycarp? Polycarp. Started with a P. I almost said Papias. Anyway, so, but these all, the, the, there's lots of citations of Scripture as such, 
as authoritative in these. And so you can see J. J. Warner Wallace in his book, Cold Case Christianity, does a great job of charting this all out. So you can see the acknowledgement there. So the understanding of the authority of the corpus of 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 uh, inspired works is being solidified in the first couple centuries. And it turns out the book of Hebrews is included in that. And if you read the book of Hebrews, you can see why. Because it's a very, very profound and insightful assessment and analysis of the, uh, the Mosaic law in light of what Jesus did on the cross and, and is, and is um, declaring in no uncertain terms, that the Old Testament sacrificial system is no longer in operation and no longer efficacious to forgive sins or to cover sins, more specifically, and that Jesus is now the one and perfect sacrifice. And if you continue in the old system, you're not forgiven. Only Jesus forgives sins for the reasons that writer um, describes. And so when you read through this book, you see there, there, there's this, for lack of a better word, there's a self-presenting element uh, that, of the authority that's there. And this is what the early Christians understood, what they saw. Um, and if this seems a little bit weird, uh, um, the, when I talk about why people should believe the Bible's the inerrant Word of God, I can give reasons. I give six of them characteristically. I use my hand and the fingers of my hand and a fist, etc., to illustrate these reasons. But it turns out that's not the reason I believe the Bible's inspired. And it's not the reason that most people believe the Bible's inspired, because most Christians do, and they haven't even heard my talk. It's because of the self-presenting element there that the Holy Spirit is convincing our heart of the authority of Scripture. I'm not talking about a burning in the bosom. I'm talking about something different, not something we seek and we're praying, God, give me a feeling so I know that this is your book. That's what the Mormons do. No, you read. You don't have to ask for a feeling. You read it. You engage it. And 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 you you come to the conviction that this is God speaking here. And that work of the Holy Spirit in individual Christian's life, testifying to the authority of Scripture, is something like what happened in the Assembly of the Canon. Now, the Assembly of Canon was more organized, obviously. It wasn't just a completely subjective thing. It was based on apostolic authority, largely, but it wasn't the only factor. And there were books the apostles wrote, I'm thinking of one in particular, a a letter that Paul wrote to the Corinthians that we don't have. Why don't we have it? Because God didn't deem it appropriate to save it for the canon, thinking of it from God's perspective. So just because an apostle wrote it doesn't mean that it was going to be received as canon. Um, But the ones that we have are the ones that the Holy Spirit superintended. There are objective guidelines, but they're not completely objective. There's this, there's this somewhat subjective element as well, but it's not on an individual Christian basis. It's the testimony of the whole church. And it could be the early church actually did know for sure who had written Hebrews. And there are some who argue that Peter did write it through a, you know, a scribe who, because mm-hmm. he he did that often. So there yeah. could be slight differences. Emanuensis, they called them, right. And some people, and, and I think the argument also is and it, that they gathered Hebrews with Paul's letters when in the organization of the canon. Mm-hmm. So it's possible. Um, I don't know. There are a lot of different ideas about who wrote it, but mm-hmm. the, it's possible also the early church knew who wrote it. Mm-hmm. And so they were also basing it on that. But do you know if this was ever a controversial book? I think it was a, a controversial book because of, uh, the, as I recall, but I don't have my notes all in mm-hmm. front of me, you know. Uh, I think Revelations was a little controversial, too, because it was so weird. But uh, <laughs> um, in any event, and, and there's there's a uh, – F.F. Bruce wrote a book called The Text of the – no, not the text, the uh, the Canon of Scripture. There it is, The Canon of Scripture. There's been other books that have been written, quite a few since then, to try to explain the process. Our friend Michael Kruger, I think, has done some work in that. And um, K-R-U-G-E-R. So um, the work is out there. 
but I was just kind of giving an overview um, of the whole process here. And there is a the super the Holy Spirit superintended the process. It wasn't some group that had mm-hmm. independent authority themselves that said, "Okay, here's the right books." It just didn't work out that way. 